This is like slightly cracked. This iPad is like four and a half years old. Mm -hmm. So, welcome everyone. We're talking about lymphomas today. So, first thing we want to do, um, we're going to focus on the, the bees for this portion. So, normal follicle um, mantle zone is most of the lymphocytes you see. Other than some places like hernia sac, you really don't see a lot of the marginal zone. Mantle zone lymphocytes are pretty well black. It's all those black cells outside of a germinal center. Marginal zone cells are gray. Um, and then the um, follicle center cells are larger paler with vesicular nuclei. Um, so when you look at this, this is all mantle. Marginal zone you're not really seeing. Um, and then you see the follicle center. This is sinus histiocytosis, um, which you get in a lot of reactive nodes. But you also I get a little bit of a gray layer in here sometimes in some areas, but it's very hard to see marginal zone in normal. A normal reactive germinal center should be about 100% key 67 positive. So um, you would think generally that malignancies have a higher proliferative rate than benign things that is just the reverse for a germinal center. So a germinal center should be a hundred percent or ninety plus percent in proliferative phase whereas a even a bad lymphoma is maybe sixty seventy percent so maybe a little counterintuitive but higher MIB-1 T67 rates in benign than in malignant. And normally, it, this is so dark that it's hard to make out, but you're, normally there's a gradient from one side to the other side, a little darker on one, lighter on the other, is normal. Here we are in a hernia sac, and we're actually making out some marginal zone there. Okay, now we're in the germinal center. So germinal center lymphocytes tend to be larger, they have visible nucleoli, they're usually cleaved, which means they're not just round, right? So um, a blast is round, a site is cleaved. Immunoblast has the nucleolus in the center, centroblast has the nucleolus at the side, difference between a centrocyte in a central blast is the centrocyte has a cleaved nucleus. To help you remember that site, the C is cleaved, right? Whereas the B in blast is round, so it's non-cleaved. It kind of just helps you remember the terminology. B cells are CD20 positive. CD79A starts early, so pre-B cells are already positive, and plasma cells are still positive. Whereas CD20 doesn't hit all pre-B, doesn't hit plasma, just hits kind of the middle mature B cells. So 79A, little broader, starts earlier in life, goes a little later in life than, than CD20 does. Lymphomas that are CD20 negative, what would be your major scenario? Someone who's been treated with rituximab and has a relapse. So that's your germinal center. Again, MIB strongly positive. A normal germinal center is BCL2 negative. These are all important to know because they're what make you understand a report when you get it back. So they're all um, 
important concepts, testable concepts. Um, so a normal germinal center should be BCL2 negative, but mantle and marginal zone are BCL2 positive normally. So germinal center BCL2 negative, marginal and mantle zone BCL2 positive, that's normal. So the follicle center was BCL2 negative, but BCL6 and CD10 positive. Those are markers for a germinal center population. So germinal center BCL2 negative, whereas marginal and mantle are positive. BCL6 positive, CD10 positive. That's normal. CD21 and CD23 stain the dendritic network of the follicle, that's normal. In lymphoma, that dendritic network gets picked apart. So there are whole, big holes punched in that net in lymphoma. What you're looking at here is totally normal. That's what normal should look like. Kappa light chain, they're normally twice as many as lambda light chain. So normal is twice as many kappas as lambdas. Two to one ratio, that's normal. Okay, so a marginal zone lymphoma, there's our marginal zone. Our marginal zone is going to go bad, right? So it's that population of gray cells that was out at the periphery that's going to go bad. So that goes bad and it starts to expand. And then it starts to invade. So what you're going to see is germinal centers that are normal with all this kind of stellate spreading out gray stuff around and in between. So that's kind of what it looks like. There are always plasma cells at the periphery. That's where you're going to see clonality. So you're not going to see usually kappa or lambda light chain restriction in the germinal center population or the surrounding marginal zone population. You'll see it out in the plasma cells. And it'll be a 10 to 1 exaggeration of the normal 2 to 1 kappa to lambda ratio. In a more advanced lymphoma where you're sort of losing your, um, your germinal centers, you still have your plasma cells at the periphery. Cutaneous isolated plasma cytoma is usually a manifestation of marginal zone lymphoma. It's not myeloma. It's just marginal zone lymphoma that's been overpopulated by plasma cells. So kind of a maturing marginal zone lymphoma. So that's kind of what they can look like. Again, for the follicle centers, you got to remember immunoblast in the center, centroblast at the side, centrocyte cleaved. When we are talking about marginal zone lymphomas, it's a small centrocyte-like cell. It means it's a small gray cleaved cell is the way it's often described. The other thing that's typical for marginal zone lymphomas, they're vertical. They tend to be gray smudgy cells that are vertically oriented. So dense and vertical. And when you look at your vessels, your lumens are all preserved. There's no reaction to the vessels. Your follicles are normal. So you, if that were a reactive infiltrate, if you had that dense of reactive infiltrate, you'd have vessel proliferation, endothelial swelling, your follicles would have PEH. They see in lymphoma, there's all of this squalor around them, and they seem to be oblivious to all the squalor around them. The vessels are not reactive. 
the epithelium is not reactive. They're reactive in a reactive volcano. And then you look at the um, cells and you see this kind of expansion. It's all a regular expansion of these gray cells. That's another one, again, kind of vertically oriented, gray in color. When you look at them, they're cleaved cells. They're kind of medium to small sized cleaved gray cells. I have a question. Crystal. Yeah. When you say uh, vertically, does it matter whether it's parallel or perpendicular to the epidermis? Or um, perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay. So um, like a hair follicle is mm -hmm. oriented. Um, and then, you know, not surprisingly, CD20 positive. When you look with CD21 or CD23, there's, um, you may have normal germinal centers or it may start to get picked apart by the, um, by the marginal zone cells that are starting to invade. Um, but you can see that this is all expanded peripheral to where the germinal centers used to be. BCL6 shows your germinal centers and shows most of your lymph, your lymphoid infiltrate, your lymphoma is BCL6 negative. You'd expect it to be CD20 positive. You'd expect it to be BCL2 positive because the normal marginal zone is BCL2 positive. If some of those numbers seem like alphabet soup, you just have to put it on a 3 by 5 card and do it every morning with your Wheaties until you own it, which only takes about a week or so. MIB-1, those germinal centers look <coughs> benign, right? Strongly, strongly, solidly positive, like a benign germinal center. Your T cells will also be positive, which is most of what's positive out here in the interstitium. Um, BCL2 is positive because the normal marginal zone is positive. Kappa light chain, lambda light chain, it's probably a little beyond 2 to 1 ratio. Okay, follicle center lymphoma, normal follicle center, remember, was BCL6 and CD10 positive. If they go malignant, first off, your follicles will look asymmetrical, right? Because that center population is starting to grow out. It's starting to crush what's around it. And in a follicle pattern, the well-differentiated ones retain BCL6 and CD10 and look. The best um, description is it looks like a Zanksmeer nuclei. nuclei. We have nuclear irregular nuclei with molding. Your um, mantle zones are asymmetrical. But it retains BCL6 and CD10, whereas as it gets more diffuse, you lose CD10. So diffuse follicle center lymphoma, it'll retain BCL6, but CD10 is lost, whereas normal it would have expressed you know, normal follicle centers expresses. So that's a, um, this is a follicle center type lymphoma. And this one's sort of halfway between diffuse and retaining some follicles, but you certainly see you don't have a symmetrical mantle around it. It's going to be CD20 positive. Um, you can see your darker mantle zone, but that's kind of crushed by the lymphoma, which is the larger B cells. Tingible bodies are dead and dying nuclei. So if a benign germinal center has a 100% MIB fraction, why doesn't it keep growing until it's twice the size you are? because it dies just as quickly as it grows, right? And you see all of that in the form of necrotic nuclear debris. It's proliferating super fast and it's dying just as fast. So lymphoma 
by and large, is not a malignancy caused by excessive proliferation. It's a malignancy caused by failure to die on cue. Because normal follicle center cells have an incredibly high proliferative rate, 100%. It's just dying just as fast. Lymphoma expands because it fails to die. And the... Um, the 1618 translocations and systemic lymphomas often associated with that failure to die make it express BCL2, which it normally wouldn't express. Um, lymphoma, you're not going to see um, the tingible bodies. You will often see these carrot cells, which are squashed follicle center cells. They've been called carrot cells or spermatozoa-like cells. So your follicles are kind of irregular, squashed. Your mantle zones don't go all the way around them. That's all clearly irregular. It looks like a follicle center B. You look at the cells in the center. You have your carrot cells. You still have a lot of cleaved cells, so it's not primarily round blasts. Here's another kind of diffuse lymphoid infiltrate. So to make sense of it, you see it's all CD20 positive, so it's probably a B lymphoma, right? Um, that is our BCL6, and you see some germinal centers. They're certainly not well organized, right? The cells are kind of all over the place. But it's not expressing CD10, so you would expect that normal germinal center population would express CD10. In this case, it's lost CD10, so it's freaky, it's abnormal, and that helps tell you that that's the malignant population. So when you look at you know, which is the malignant population, one, it's the one that's expanding, that's crowding everything else out. And two, it's the one that has <coughs> weird markers, like it's not supposed to have. Unexpected combinations of markers or loss of markers, telling you it's freaky, it's bizarre, it's not expressing what it's supposed to express. Those are all the things that help you hone in on which population is the lymphoma. Because the markers are key to that, to understand your reports, you have to understand the markers so those would be valid things to ask about, right? Um, CD21, well, there's a pathetic little remnant of what used to be um, the follicular dendritic network. So you have all these follicle center cells, and they're spreading out all over the place, but they're not normally expressing CD10, and there's almost no normal follicular dendritic network left. That sounds like a follicle center lymphoma to me, diffuse type. Population doesn't express BCL2, so all of these pale areas are the lymphoma. CD3, you see a lot of T around, um, so that's a follicle center lymphoma. Let's go. Here's another Yeah. Are these ones usually a lot more diffuse than the marginal one you were shown? These ones look like they're just like everything. Um, they, they do tend to be, yes. Yeah. So we're going to go through some patterns later. Okay, leg type lymphoma. We're just fast forwarding um, so that we're not spending too much time on, the, on that. So leg type lymphoma is a nasty, blastic, round cell, follicle center phenotype lymphoma that has picked up BCL2. So it's lost CD10. A lot of them have even lost BCL6. They've picked up BCL2, which they're normally not supposed to express, and they've picked up MUM1. So when you look at it, it is sheets of nasty, round 
lymphocytes. So they don't tend to be cleaved. They tend to be round or oval. Um, they still express CD20. They may or may not express BCL6. They start to pick up BCL2 and MUM1. Intravascular lymphoma can be B or T. It doesn't really matter that much for prognosis, whether it's B or T. CLL is the other major pattern. This one is really valid because any dermatologist um, who looks at tissue, any dermatologist who ever looks at a basal cell, any Mohs surgeon, when you're doing Mohs and you're towards your periphery and you have lymphoid aggregates, it usually suggests there's still tumor there, especially like perineural invasion. You look for things like that. If your lymphoid aggregates never go away and they're B, not T, your patient has CLL. And good busy Mohs surgeons like Vic Marks would one or two times a year call the internist and say, do you already know Mr. Smith has CLL? And sometimes the initial diagnosis of CLL is Vic making the diagnosis on Mohs sections that he just has these lymphoid aggregates that just won't ever go away, they're big, they're deep, they're away from the tumor, and they stay in B, not T. Okay, those were the things I wanted to talk about um, for Bs, although let's just real quick, let's do some concepts on T and then look at glass. So T cell lymphoma, um, you have epidermotropism out of proportion to spongiosis. So what's the difference between epidermotropism and exocytosis? Epidermotropism is a term we usually use for lymphoma, which means not a lot of spongiosis. Exocytosis is usually used for spongiotic dermatitis, so it's associated with spongiosis. So here there's not going to be a lot of spongiosis. Too much infiltrate for too little spongiosis. A lymphoid band in the dermis. The lymphocytes in the epidermis tend to be large, hyperchromatic, and angulated. And they are often bigger, darker, more angulated than many of the benign recruited lymphocytes in, in the dermis. When you start to get more and more atypical cells in the dermal infiltrate, you're no longer patch stage. Now you've gone on to plaque. In patch, the atypical lymphocytes are pretty much entirely in the epidermis. In plaque, they're in the dermis. In tumor, it's lost its epidermotropism. Once it so when you have MF, you have a massive burden of tumor cells, and they're all stuck in your epidermis. When they stop being stuck in your epidermis, they can start beating on your organs, and then you got trouble. Right? So when they lose their epidermotropism, that's when patients die, and they usually die, uh, well, they often have multi-organ failure, but it's usually a septic death. So large, angulated lymphocytes, if you embed the tissue in plastic, like you're going to do it for EM, and you cut one micron thick sections. These lymphocytes are cerebriform. They look just like cesary cells. The only reason we don't see them looking like cesary cells is we cut the tissue thick. So they look like big dark angulated cells. So again, they're notched. They're notched, they're angulated, if you can count five notches in a lymphocyte, the patient probably has MF, because it means it's a cerebriform cell. Normally, you should not have any bundled collagen above the postcapillary venial. If you have bundled collagen above the postcapillary venial, it means something that's chronic, or something that's recurrent at that same site. So fixed drug will give that to you. MF, because of its chronicity, 
will give you papillodermal fibrosis. That's important because in the differential for a lymph in every hole, there's not much in that differential that will give you papillodermal fibrosis besides mycosis fungoides. Because the other things like pityriasis like lichenoides, early evolving BLK, syphilis, none of them are chronic enough in that location to give you papillary dermal fibrosis. Folliculotropic MF, same thing, except in the follicle. It's Some patients have indolent disease, but for a lot of them, their prognosis is pretty much that of tumor stage MF. Okay, so let's look at glass. So let's turn the lights on. So that's kind of to get, it's just more efficient getting through some of the markers and language that way. Uh oh, I think I just logged us, did I log us out of take? No, it's still going. It's still going, okay. Okay, so let's look here. Thank you. Oh, yep, thanks. That's what I didn't do was launch. <laughs> okay. Are we? So this is our new viewer. I think so. Do we have to hit camera? Four new consults. Hit patient. Not to follow up, but Too bright, like we're not seeing oh, it. For the guys online, I think that's it. We just got a new camera, and we're um, they're coming to show me how to use it on Wednesday. Um, I hope the didactic portion, at least, was helpful for you.